Hey everybody, welcome back to Touchy Reactions. Nightwish Army, I got a big one for you today. We're going to be checking out the song The Poet and the Pendulum. This was requested by my good friend Martine, who got me marching down this rabbit hole into Nightwish a long time back. This is probably one of the most important songs in the history of Nightwish. Uh, she sent me a email that had a PDF in it that breaks down all the lyrics to this song and the history behind this song. We're actually gonna go through that real quick here in the first five minutes. I will put a timestamp down below right now to let you know if you don't wanna go through all that and just wanna watch the performance. I don't know why, wouldn't you rather know the history behind the song and what the lyric breakdown is? I mean, that's what we're gonna do right now. But if you don't wanna see it, jump ahead to this timestamp down below and uh, that's when the reaction to the live performance at Wembley starts. So thank you, Martine. Uh, I know this song means a lot to you, so we're going to make sure we give it the respect it deserves. Before we jump into it, I just want to thank all the Nightwish Army uh, members that have stuck with this channel and been watching all my reactions. I thank you very much. Uh, you guys have been giving me great feedback in the comments, subscribing to the channel, helping me grow over here, and I thank you very much for that. It's uh, It's been a fun ride since we started this journey, and I've learned a lot about this band in the, in the meantime. They've got a great fandom. You guys really uh, love this band. And even though they've gone through a lot of changes, you stick with them and uh, you know, that's pretty cool. So, And they got a lot of great music. So awesome, awesome, awesome. Let's go ahead and jump into this breakdown. Uh, this talks about the story behind the song, what led up to it, and the inspiration for it, that kind of stuff. So bear with me. I'm going to try and read through this. Uh, and I will uh, do my best to get through as quickly as possible so we can jump into the song. So here we go. All right, The Poet and the Pendulum. Tomas wrote this song after Nightwish fired Tar Tarja Turinen, their first singer. The band explained why they wanted to part ways with Tarja in an open letter. You can read it here. I've actually already read that. Uh, had a lot to do with her uh, husband slash manager that was, uh, you know, she was being a diva. There was a lot of money issues going on, that kind of stuff. And so, you know, they uh, they decided to part ways in kind of a dirty breakup between the band and, and her. So Tomas was in a deep depression after all of this, and he was being attacked by the media and the fans. It was a band called, it was a band called, but Tomas, oh, it was a band call, but Tomas took the brunt of it all. He wrote The Poet and the Pendulum about this period of time. He said in an interview that he killed himself in this song to avoid killing himself in real life. His depression was that deep. This song is essentially a suicide note. That is very sad, very depressing. And, uh, you know, some of us have had suicide impact our lives very closely. Me personally, I've definitely had that in my life. I'm glad that he chose to take it out uh, with his craft instead of actually following through with that. That would have been tragic. So the whole title, the whole title is of the song... The, the title of the song is based on The Pit and the Pendulum, which is a poem by Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, let's see here. The narrator in, endures many near-death experiences, one of which includes being tied to an altar with a massive pendulum swinging above him. The pendulum, which is shaped like a sigh, is slowly and tortuously moving closer and closer towards the narrator's heart, and he sees that his life is about to end. He hangs on to the last hope, and before he would have been killed, the rats in the dungeon chew away the ropes and he's freed from the pendulum. In the end, it turned out to be that the pendulum wasn't real. Nothing, just the narrator's mental state of mind. The song is written backwards. The end is at the beginning. So that's kind of the story behind the song and the inspiration for it. There's several acts here. We got act one, act two, act three, act four, act five. Okay, so, and it starts at the end and works its way backwards. So act one is uh, the, the end of their relationship. So the song is divided into five parts. The lyrics are in black and the breakdown is in blue here. Let me make this bigger. All right, here we go. Act one, the white lands of Empathica. The end, the songwriter's dead. The blade fell upon him taking him to the white lands of Empathica, of innocence. Empathica, innocence. The song begins with the end, Tomas's death. He wanted to believe that the ending, he wanted to believe that ending it all would lead to peace and the restoration of innocence. The white lands of Empathica are from a Stephen King novel, The Dark Tower. 
It is a snowy tundra located in the end world. The residents of Empathica are known for their abilities to empathize and to share other people's emotions. All right. Act two. The dreamer and the wine. Poet without a rhyme. A widowed writer torn apart by chains of hell. The last perfect verse is still the same old song. Oh Christ, how I hate what I have become. Take me home. Then the chorus is, get away, run away, fly away. Leave me astray to dreamer's hideaway. I cannot cry because the shoulder cries more. I cannot die. I, a whore for the cold world. Forgive me, I have but two faces. One for the world, one for God. Save me. I cannot cry as the shoulder cries more. I cannot die. I, a whore for the cold world. My home was there and then. Those meadows of heaven. Adventure filled days. One with every smiling face. Please, no more words. Thoughts from a severed head. No more praise. Tell me once my heart goes right. Take me home. And the chorus. A whore for the world. A whore for the cold world. So the description here talks about how Act 2 was about... Uh, this part describes the feelings of knowing that Tomas, the poet, was going to have to fire Tarya. He was tortured knowing that it was going to happen and feared that it would mean the death of the band. The chorus note, uh, he would normally have sought support with the band, but the band was reeling as hard as he was over this, and Tomas had to be strong to keep the band together. I cannot cry because the shoulder cries more. Uh, must endure even if the burdens of my shoulder is too much. I cannot die. I, a whore for the cold world. I cannot end my life as I see my earthly suffering as a way to reach others. So he was, the struggles he was dealing with as he was leading up to the decision to uh, uh, let her go from the band. All right, Act 3, The Pacific. And like I say, we're going backwards in time. So this must have been the part when everything was going well. Uh, you know, it's, they haven't got to the rocky part. Sparkle my scenery with turquoise waterfall. With beauty underneath the ever free. Tuck me in beneath the blue, beneath the pain, beneath the rain. Goodnight kiss for a child in time. Swaying blade, my lullaby. On the shore we sat and hoped under the same pale moon. Whose guiding light chose you shows you all and there's a spoken part that says i'm afraid i'm so afraid being raped again and again and again i know i will die alone but loved you live long enough to hear the sounds of guns long enough to find yourself screaming every night long enough to see your friends betray you for years i have been strapped unto this altar now i only have three minutes and counting I just wish the tide could catch me first and give me a death I always longed for. Wow. So poetic. <laughs> so this verse is, uh, the description behind this verse is the calm before the storm. The band was unanimous that Tarya should be fired. There was relief for Tomas, but he knew that it was the calm before the storm. This act ends with the monologue about the fan backlash, rape, gunfire, betrayal by friends. This is also the first reference to suicide Avoid the confrontation instead of waiting for the blade to fall. Revealed is also that the poet is going to die in three minutes. And three minutes later, you can hear the pendulum killing him. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Act four, dark passion play. Second robber to the right of Christ, cut in half infanticide. The world will rejoice today as the crows feast on the rotting poet. Everyone must bury their own. No pack to bury the heart of stone. Now he's home in hell, serves him well. Slain by the bell, tolling for his farewell. Next morning dawned upon his altar. Remains the dark passion play. Performed by his friends without shame. Spitting on his grave as they came. The whore for the cold world, a whore for the cold world. Then there's another spoken part here. Today in the year of our Lord 2005, Tomas was called Tomas was called from the cares of the world. He stopped crying at the end of each beautiful day. The music he wrote had too long been without silence. The music he wrote had too long been without silence. He was found naked and dead with a smile on his face 
a pen and a thousand pages of erased text saved me. Wow. So in this part, the breakdown says that the fans called for Tomas's death and celebrated his gruesome passing. Marco aggressively peace, Marco's aggressive piece represents the backlash from the fans and the press. Cut in half, and infanticide refers to the death of his innocence. Act four ends with Tomas's death as a regret after a cutting short of his career and the songs that he felt he would have written. You can hear the blade fall. Wow. All right, part five, mother and father. Be still, my son, you're home. Or when did you become so cold? Oh, when did you become so cold? The blade will keep on descending. All you need to feel my love. All you need is to feel my love. Search for beauty, find your shore. Try to save them all, bleed no more. You have such oceans within. In the end, I will always love you. And that's the beginning. So at the height of his depression, he did go home. And were it not for his mother, he might really have killed himself. The words at the end were spoken to him by his mother. Wow. All right. So that is the story and the lyric breakdown for this song. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Um, it's a long song. It's like uh, 13 minutes long, an epic. I'm going to go ahead and turn the closed captions off. We've been through the lyrics. Uh, this was the exact version that uh, Martine requested that we watch, so I'm sure it's going to be a good one. Let me make sure the volume's all up. And here we go. Welcome back to all of you who skipped the uh, lyric breakdown and the uh, story behind the song. We're going to go ahead and jump into this live performance of The Poet and the Pendulum by Nightwish. Here we go. So this, uh, in the background, you actually see the sigh, the pendulum that's represented in the pit and the pendulum, and obviously in the in this song as well. The visual you should have is that that thing is swinging back and forth and slowly getting lower and lower over the top of a body that's strapped to a table. That's the, uh, the pit and the pendulum poem. I think now, if I remember correctly, they actually put that on the cover album, the cover of the album. This must have come off of. I remember seeing that symbol. I didn't put two and two together when I saw it the first time, but now that I now that I'm here, it makes sense. By the way, that album is probably right below my picture right now in this uh, when I, after I edit it. So.
what they're talking about right there. Empu comes over to Tomas. I wonder what he told him. It looked like you said, wow, thank you, to the crowd, yeah. No Flora was born to do this. She's an amazing lead singer. I also like the visual here of the uh, rough seas in the background. You know what I mean? The uh, you know the band's going through a rough time. We got the storm in the background. It must have represents like the turmoil and strife that was going on within the band as they're going through all this chaos. Very cool visuals. The uh, set design on this is really nice.
That effect there with the beating heart that slowly slowed down and then just stopped. Uh, and I got a little bit of goosebumps there when the, the voice came in talking about Tomas being found dead with a thousand pages uh, silenced. Ooh. I appreciate how beautiful Floor's voice is on this part right here. So soft. I like how Impu and Marco are over there by Tomas right now. It's kind of like, uh, I got two different feelings about it. One, it's like they're over there as support for him, knowing, you know, that they're all going through this thing together and how how emotional this song is for him. They've, they've moved right over next to him on the stage as if to give them the support. The other uh, idea that it, it puts off is uh, this was when they were, uh, you know, they were without a lead singer. They were... They were at this point in time when it was just them and uh, in search for another singer and that kind of thing. So the three of them off to the side by themselves were, uh, you know, facing that dilemma of are we going to go forward, that kind of thing. So really a cool visual for them all being that close to Tomas over there on the stage.
Yeah. What an epic song. Thank you, Martine, for requesting this. And thank you so much for taking the time to give me the breakdown on the lyrics and the story behind it. It really made the song that much more impactful knowing what it was about. I think if I would have went into this blind not knowing anything about it, it wouldn't have hit me as hard as, as it actually did. And it's got to be really hard for the band to ever think about performing this uh, because it just brings back so many bad memories. So awesome, awesome song. Thank you very much. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this reaction, Hit that like button down below. I appreciate it very much. It makes me feel good when people like my videos. It keeps me motivated to keep doing them. And uh, if you're not already a subscriber to the channel, come on over and join us. There's a big red button down here. If you click on that subscribe button, it'll turn gray, let you know you've joined the channel. And uh, if you hit the notification bell right next to it, it'll let you know anytime I drop some new content here on Touchy Reactions. We do Nightwish, Nightwish Reactions on Wednesdays, so uh, tune in on Wednesdays for more Nightwish. And... Uh, that's pretty much it for this reaction video. Oh, I almost forgot. I got a Patreon too. And how can I forget the Patreon? My patrons are the ones helping support the channel. Thank you to all my patrons. If you're interested in joining the Patreon, there's a link up here in the corner. And, uh, you know, just come on over, join up. You'll get access to all the videos as soon as they're edited. They go up on uh, the Patreon. We've got lots of polls and stuff over there too. And some Patreon exclusive videos go up over there as well. So... Thank you so much to all my patrons. That is all I've got for this video. I appreciate you stopping by, and please don't forget to come on back.